Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very, very important edition of the Immigrant Magazine Weekly. I'm Pamela Anchang. I'm really excited to be with you today. However, this is a very serious topic that we're going to talk about with a very important guest. When was the last time you saw your counselor, your psychiatrist, your mental health provider? Think about it. Most of us come from a community that diminishes mental health problems. A lot of us have never seen any of the above that I mentioned. And for some, the answer would probably be yes, maybe yesterday. In black and brown communities, immigrant communities, mental health is stigmatized. My guest today is someone who has mastered strategies about how to provide mental health services to communities like ours that really do not prioritize you know, a child's mental health or even my mental health. I want you to join me today. Don't miss this interview with Mr. Alpha Timbo, Clinical Director at the African Coalition. He's gonna teach us about how to handle mental health and what to do if you know someone that is suffering. Before I bring him, do me a favor, click on the subscribe button. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, like us so that YouTube will share this video and also ring the notification bell so that this content and more will be um, notified to you, okay? And follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Pam and Chang. Without further ado, I don't wanna waste any time. Please welcome Mr. Alpha Timbo. So welcome, Alpha, to this really, really important conversation. So glad to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's amazing because um, in my introduction, I talked about the fact that most of us come from communities that do not prioritize mental health. I suppose that's what we're talking about, behavioral health. Mm -hmm. Before we go into that, just give me just a little bit about your background and how you got into this um, subject matter. Thank you so much, uh, Pamela, and I really appreciate the time you took to uh, do this interview with us and in, in the African community and the African diaspora. I'm Alpha G. Timbo. I'm originally from Sierra Leone. I came here in the mid 80s. I did a lot of studies in uh, political science, international relations and comparative politics. And later I decided to go to school to do social work. After the Rodney King riots, I went to social work school at UCLA. I primarily work uh, in the Los Angeles, South LA area working with uh, marginalized population, African-Americans, Hispanics, and now lately I'm more involved with uh, our African people that have come here from Africa to try to adjust with various mental health difficulties. Um, I'm a licensed clinical social worker here in the Los Angeles area. Uh, I've worked a little bit with uh, the Department of Mental Health uh, subcontracts agencies in South Los Angeles, and also working with the African Coalition. I'm here just trying to do what we can to help our people navigate this system to be able to adjust in this maze called the United States of America. Tell me about it. It gives yeah. us opportunities and sometimes the challenges are enormous. Mm -hmm. And you have quite the resume for this conversation. So think about it, you know, it's like, what is behavioral health? And how do you see it manifested in black and brown communities and especially the African community? Thank you. That's a very good question. Behavioral health uh, is it's a very broad term. Uh, behavioral health means really to me, it means helping individuals to live, uh, a, I don't want to use appropriately, to be able to adjust. I mean, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally in their, in their social environment. Uh, I mean, we all have our ups and downs uh, that happens in life, but usually life is good. Life is supposed to be good. But things happen in the society that makes people lose balance. When I say balance, they lose their emotional well-being, okay? They are physical, as a result, they lose their physical well-being. They lose their spiritual well-being. And when I'm saying that, behavioral health is a combination of all of that, okay? Uh, your physical, spiritual, mental, emotional well-being is all connected. So we want our people to be able to adjust uh, in that level so that they can be able to function in society appropriately and become productive citizens. That's what behavioral health is in a, in a nutshell. Helping people to just adjust, 
you know because each of those things we talk about can lead to an uh, to 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 mal adjustment in society so uh that's what it means to me i mean so you know what i mean what you said makes sense and i've never thought about it mm -hmm. teaching people how to function mm -hmm. in spite of the challenges i guess exactly oh my god absolutely, absolutely. I, uh -huh. you know, and it's funny because we come from a society most of us mm -hmm. immigrants in general mm -hmm. especially black and black and brown immigrants Mm -hmm. we come from cultures where that is not a priority we don't talk about it um a child is growing up the attitudes in school uh it's a bad child mm -hmm. an adult is unable to i mean i have relatives who we just classified as a nuisance in the family absolutely so pay attention to the fact that they may be dealing with depression they may be dealing with some issues so tell me about some of the how to identify if someone is struggling or if you are struggling that's a very good question um I agree with you totally in the sense that where we came from, uh, we don't usually talk about mental health in this way it's talked about in the West. Uh, as, you, as you use the word appropriately, we have family members that are struggling with mental health issues. As you name it, it can be depression, it can be anxiety, it can be any other mental health disorder. It can be a personality disorder. As you said, you we just say it's a nuisance. But absolutely, I agree with what you're saying. So we come with that attitude in this country, not knowing that whatever happens in our environment, okay, is going to affect the way we behave. Okay, whatever is going on with our families, whatever is going on at home, whatever is going on with employment, whatever is going on with your with your with your job, with your family members, with uh, with the community, is going to affect your emotional well-being. So the way you you really find out about that is to just watch behaviors. You know, watch behaviors and. Uh, the effects of those behaviors on the person and the environment they live in, i.e., if you're depressed. I mean, we tend to sleep a lot. We tend to isolate. We tend to not talk about it. We tend not to We lose our appetite. We do a lot of things that is not different from a, a white person, a black person, a Hispanic person. Those are the symptoms of depression. So if that's going on with you, because you lost your job, then you're going to probably know that you have something called an adjustment disorder or maybe some kind of a problem you can kick back to. Same thing happens to you back home, like those refugees coming here. I mean, forget about what happened back home, why they decide to leave. But on the way here, they went through a lot of trauma. They went, they go through a lot of things. Those things tend to affect the way you, 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 you view yourself, what's going on emotionally, and how it's going to help you adjust in that, in the dark society. So basically, the way we look at it is just, just watch behaviors and what people say to you. Okay, how they communicate to you because a behavior is is a way of communication. Okay, uh, people that are always angry, people are always having issues with their kids, something going on with the kid. But guess what? This kid is having problems because of some other issues that have happened in the family or in the community that's, that's making him that's making him have or her have these behavior problems. So basically, if somebody is living in, uh, in America here, I mean, I'm not saying he'd be happy all the time. I'm not saying he should be sad all the time. You know, those things are happening. But sometimes, I mean, if the sadness is goes to a, a level, he cannot function. If your kid's behavior in school is going to the fact, to the point that the kid is not able to adjust and function in school and become productive, something is wrong. Mm -hmm. It's not their fault. It's not my fault. It's not the teacher's fault. Maybe it's, it's something that's going on within that child we, we ought to look into so that we can be able to support, give that child help to be able to succeed in society. Same thing with, with domestic violence. It's going on in the home. Sometimes we tend to push it under the rug. But if your your husband is always angry, your husband is always hitting on you, uh, doing things that you don't like, then let's talk about it. Maybe the man himself who is doing that has some issues he has to deal with. Maybe he doesn't know it. He's just looking at what has happened in the past. So those are the things we talk about, you know, to make sure that uh, we're able to get to the bottom of um, of, uh, of of what mental health issues are going on in our society or in our communities. That's so much insight. So let's talk about challenges. Um, in the West, even just watching American television, right? Every time they talk, they bring a psychologist. Every time they say, well, when, did you see a counselor? Um, I'm seeing my psychiatrist. So it's like, oh, you're worse. You're weak. 
we look at it that way. We don't see the necessity. We're kind of like, we're used to like just being strong, toughen it up and hustle and do all these things. So tell us a little bit about some of the challenges that you've encountered in connecting mental health services with our communities. There's a lot of challenges going on in our communities regarding mental health stigma. Stigma is one of the main things that is going on in our communities. Just like what you said at, at your beginning statement back home, when somebody have some issues, they said it's a nuisance. They said, we, we use the word really. We said, you're crazy. Something is wrong with you. I mean, those are the people that walk in the street. Um, the kids, the kids will tease on them. Will, will tease them, throw things on them. You know, just make make fun of them. You know, but in reality, nobody wants to do that. No one, nobody wants to be isolated. We are social human beings. We're supposed to live in social settings wherein we are able to help each other. Wherein we are able to support each other. Wherein you want to feel loved and cared for by your family. You understand what I'm saying? So basically what I'm saying to you is to do whatever we can to reduce that stigma. Reducing that stigma means that uh, we are going to help you find out what is wrong so that we can help you adjust in this community. Some of the challenges is that our people don't like to talk about that. They do not want to talk about it. They do not want to talk about it. Yes, it's very embarrassing to say, oh, I'm receiving mental health. Are you kidding me? Everybody has something going on. But the more you accept it and the more you are willing to get help, the better. Okay? But the bottom line is for African communities and African uh, um, uh, people, we don't like talking about mental health issues because of the stigma that is associated with it. Yeah. Okay? So that's that's basically the main thing. Yeah. Uh, might be other issues too, but the main thing is, is, is stigma. Yeah. When they find out you're seeing a, a psychologist, just like what you say, or, or social worker, they think you have a problem. So the bottom line is to make sure that uh, we try to reduce that stigma in our communities on our, and, uh, that we live in. Absolutely. So what are some of the strategies or you know, innovative methods that, uh, that you particularly have employed in order to get, this, get us to go out there and get help? Because a lot of people, the rates of suicide, there are situations where husbands have killed their spouses. Um, it's becoming a story in, in our communities. So what are some of the strategies that you've employed or that you know of that we, you know, in order to get to get people to get help? Thank you very much. That's a very good question. We've done this for a while now in, in the African communities, myself, Sanait and others. Um, what we really do is very innovative in the sense that it's been over 20, uh, 13 to 15 years now we've been doing it. Uh, for African people, uh, for African people in the diaspora, what we try to do is to is to really look at each community from Africa, like the Cameroonian community, maybe the Sierra Leone community, the Nigerian, the Ghanaian, uh, so on and so forth. We try to identify the stakeholders, the decision makers in that in those communities, and engage them, okay, and engage them to to help us communicate or include us. In their in their communities, meaning that they might have some weddings, there might be some uh, things going on when it comes to um, uh, when it comes to uh, celebration of, of different things like independence celebration, dance, and uh, and maybe some spiritual activities. Okay, to so make sure we go in and talk about the things that are important. We don't straight away say men are here. We say. What is it that is giving you difficulties in, uh, in, in navigating this system? What is it that you're having problems with in America, adjusting in, in, in America? Some of them may say, I have a problem with my child. Something is going on, he doesn't listen. I mean, because when we come from home, we want our child to be like us. <laughs> we went to school, we study hard. I want, I'm a social worker, I'm a doctor, I want my, my child to be a doctor. But guess what? Something might be going on, the child is not telling you that we need to address. You know, so we go to the church. That's a, that's something else we do. We are very familiar with most of the African churches in the in the South Los Angeles area, in the Los Angeles area. We go to the mosque, okay, and talk to the imams and say, hey, this is what we do. And also we try to find out determining factors, determinants of mental health in our community, such as what? Immigration. A lot of our African people have some problems with immigration issues. 
So if you have immigration issues, you cannot walk, you cannot do what you want. All the way from Africa, you've struggled to be here. Nine out of 10 times, you're going to have many health issues. Okay, if you don't, if you, if you, if you're going to be deported pretty soon, you don't even know how to get your papers and you can have proper unemployment so they can be able to fend for yourself and your family. Nine out of 10 times, you're going to have some problems with anxiety or depression or some, or some mental health issues. So we go through the determinants of what? Of mental health. You have a problem getting a job or you have a problem getting men, um, uh, medical help. We provide you with those services that's going to help you. But at the same time, we ask you what is going on. Okay, are you are you feeling depressed? Are you feeling a little isolated? What's the relationship between you and your wife and your husband? We talk we talk those things in public, wherein people can be able to decipher what we needed, what they needed, so that they can seek help. And also, we try to we want to make sure confidentiality is key. Right. When you when you reach out to me as a social worker, guess what? I'm not going to go around talking about your business. That's unprofessional. We don't do that. So those are the things that we do. Uh, to make sure that we reach out to as many Africans as possible so that they can be able to seek mental health services in our communities. That's amazing. Yeah. I know the African Coalition has been doing a lot of work and their focus is really the Im immigration and you know being able to assimilate and function well in the, in, in the United States. So tell me a little bit about uh, which of these methods really have been the most effective because you've really given us quite a, a slew of examples. Which ones work the best, though? The best, the best for me is really to to reach out to community. Uh, is, is to reach out. I think we find out that faith faith based agencies have really helped us a lot uh, in meeting our people where they are, where they feel comfortable. You know, African people are very spiritual people, very spiritual. We we love our gods. You know, we love our Allah. We love what we believe in. We always have hope. Um, uh, our locus of control is very, very, is very good. I mean, if you know what I mean by that. But the bottom line is this. I find out for the times I've been here, collaborating with other agencies is very key in the, in the, in the area that we live. But spiritual well-being, reaching out to people, especially those that are involved in the, in the church and the masjid, is very, very important in reaching out the, the general community because we have a relationship with those churches through the pastors or through the imams. And they listen to the imams too. So it doesn't mean that you go to the church or you go to the mosque, you listen to what the imam is telling you, you can do something else. Meaning that you can come to me and talk to me about some of your issues um, so that we can try to see what is best. We use both, you know, if you come with... Uh, that then we can talk about your your religion or whatever that keeps you strong to get you where you need to get to. I just need to add my own little psychotherapy in there that makes sense so that I can be able to navigate this system and get some proper mental health that's going to be able to help you become an, a, a productive citizen for yourself and the children that you have in here. Wow, that wow. is amazing. So what who are some of the partners? Because this is a lot of work. Uh, you have to deal with stigma. You want to have to deal with people feeling shame. Um, you have to do people who have pride, ego, or who just don't believe in it. Some people just don't believe it. Forget stigma. Forget all of that. They just don't believe in mental health. That someone can have mental health issues. They say, oh, you're lazy. <laughs> Get yourself, go out there and work. It's laziness or whatnot. So we need partners. So who are some of the partners that African Coalition has been working with to do this work? And because we need more, I'm sure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. As I said earlier, uh, thank you for asking that question. We have a lot of partners that we work with in the Los Angeles area. Uh, uh, forget about the churches and the masjids that I, I already talked about. Those are very good partners that we work with very closely. We also try to work very closely with the, with Los Angeles Department of Mental Health. Uh, which is very, which is a very good uh, 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 department that really helps us with uh, the kind of work that we do to do work that is very consistent with the needs and the culture of our people, the Department of Mental Health. That's very good. And also we, we reach out, we, we partner with people like Charla. Charla is a, is a Hispanic based organization that helps people with immigration issues. Uh, and also uh, uh, places like uh, people like um, uh, Baji. Baji is another one too. That really helps uh, black immigrants uh, from, uh, from in the diaspora to help them with issues to be able to 
to, to, to settle down in this community. So we do all of that to make sure that whatever needed to be done with our, with our people in the communities, uh, we are able to, to, to support them to adjust in these communities effectively. That's good. I'm glad you said that because now you just talk about Chela, you talk about Baji. It mm. just dawned on me that this is really the subject matter of behavioral health. Mm. Does. Absolutely, yeah. If immigration status is a problem, mm -hmm. if your housing is a problem, mm -hmm. if your financial status is a problem, mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to function. So Baji, you know, Black Alliance for Just Immigration and Chela, I know Chela very well. Um, I can just imagine them being amazing partners to you. So tell us, tell our audience, if someone is struggling, how can they, where can they go to get help? How can they reach you or any other services? Absolutely. They can always call the African Coalition. We can, they can always call the African Coalition. We are located 5757 West Century Boulevard in, uh, in, in uh, close to the airport. Okay. They, they can call, call us, call the office. You can Google us too. I mean, AfricanCoalition.org, you're going to get all the services that we do, immigration services, tobacco prevention, mental health services, case management services, rehab services. We do all of that. It's a matter of just picking up a phone, call us. And also we have a, a lot of African people that work there that speaks different languages. Okay, for myself, like myself sitting down here, I speak like four or five African languages, you know? So we, you can come in, you can also be sure to receive services in your own language sometime, you know, depending on who is there, okay? So just just, just Google the African Coalition, okay? Or call us, call the African Coalition. Be always somebody's gonna be there to answer the phone, to help you with whatever you need. It might be some mental health services. When I say mental health services, don't make it more than what it is. <laughs> don't make it more than what it is. Some people think mental health services has to be somebody walking up and down the street uh, talking to himself. No, 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 no. I mean, it can be as easy as, you know, you know, able to sleep yeah. or you have problems with your wife or you have problems with your kids or there's something going on in your community or in yourself that's not making you function the way you're supposed to function. You're having some nightmares about what happened to you on your way here. Okay. You're having some problems related to the safety and, the, and your welfare in the community that you live. All of that's going to create some problems with you emotionally. So if that's going on, what's going on? We can treat you, we can help you, we can support you. We don't have to always give you medication, but guess what? That's what we do. I mean, sometimes we have problems in America. It's not like Africa, you have a problem, you go to your next door neighbor, or you go to your grandma. Over here is very individualistic. Yeah. You can sit in the same neighborhood with, uh, with your next door neighbor. You don't even know them for 12 years. You don't even know their names. That happens in America. In Africa, we don't do that. So that's why the African coalition is there. The African coalition is there as your neighborhood helper, your, your neighborhood's support from Africa and, and the diaspora. When I say diaspora, from the Caribbean too. I mean, I'm, not that those are the only people we, we serve. We serve everybody. Hispanics, everybody can come, okay? Africa, everybody, African, we are all the same people. But we are the people that have, their people, they have said in the past, we are hard to serve. We are not hard to serve. We are here. All what you need to do is call us. We're going to be there to support you. Whatever problem you might have, if we cannot support you and help you, we might have a place for you, for us to, to refer you to get the kind of help that you need. That's amazing. Listen, like you said, it. we're not hard. We just may be underserved. Absolutely. Thank you. We're underserved services are not getting to us. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm so happy that we have this conversation, Alpha. And uh, I hope everyone is listening. Please, you don't have to suffer in silence. Your mental health is everything. You can have all the money in the world, but if you can't function, you can't have a good time with your family and loved ones, it makes life really difficult. And we do not want someone to do the ultimate wrong thing. Okay. So thank you so much, Alpha. And I hope everyone has heard. We're going to spread the word and I'll see you next time. Hopefully you come back with more, more information for our audience. Thank you so much, Pamela. I really appreciate you. Keep up the good work that, uh, that you're doing for the community. We pray that you continue to, to survive and uh, do whatever you do to make sure that we are able to move this diaspora po population to something that is meaningful and helpful to all of us. Thank you so much for your, uh, it's for your interview. It's my pleasure and grateful to work with organizations like African Coalition that make such an imprint in our society. So have a wonderful day. Thank you, you do the same for me. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye for now. Bye.